This is a pre-lecture video on the Phillips Curve and Oaken's Law. I'm David Frankel, a professor at Melbourne Business School. Let's get started. In a prior pre-lecture video, we studied business cycles using the aggregate expenditure model. That model focuses on the very short run in which firms do not have time to change their prices. Thus, when consumers demand more goods and services, firms simply produce more as they cannot raise prices. Since in practice, firms can raise their prices given enough time, the aggregate expenditure model is suitable only to the very short run, a few days or weeks at most. Over the longer term, price changes must be taken into account. These changes are called inflation, or in the case of price declines, deflation. We focus here on the empirical behavior of inflation in the medium term, a few months, or at most a few years. This time horizon is very relevant to business cycles. Inflation over the very long term, decades or more, is studied later in a video titled The Quantity Equation. New Zealand economist Bill Phillips was the first to notice the relation between unemployment and inflation. The slide depicts Phillips' original diagram from his 1958 paper. Unemployment appears on the horizontal axis, while wage inflation appears on the vertical axis. As you can see, years that had low unemployment tended to have high inflation, and years with high unemployment had low inflation. This inverse relation between unemployment and inflation became known as the Phillips curve. At around the same time, American economist Arthur Oaken noticed a relation between unemployment and output. Oaken's original diagram from 1961 is depicted at right. Unemployment appears on the horizontal axis. Points that are further to the right correspond to times in which unemployment was higher. The vertical axis is what Oaken called the GNP gap. Points that are higher in Oaken's graph correspond to times in which output was lower. Hence, the upward sloping relationship that you can see means that unemployment tends to be higher when output is lower. A unified explanation for the Phillips curve and Oaken's law emerges if we consider the effects of demand shocks on labor markets. First, consider a positive demand shock. That means that consumers want to buy more goods and services and are willing to pay more for them. So it becomes profitable for firms to raise output. One way they do so is by hiring more labor. Tight labor markets lead to lower unemployment and higher wages. These higher wages in turn lead firms to raise their prices. In this way, the positive demand shock leads to higher output, lower unemployment, and higher inflation. When lower unemployment is combined with higher output, we obtain Oaken's Law. When it is combined with higher inflation, we get the Phillips Curve. Now consider the effects of a negative demand shock. Such a shock leads firms to reduce output by laying workers off. These layoffs lead to higher unemployment and to lower wages. The lower wages in turn lead firms to lower their prices. When higher unemployment is combined with lower output, we obtain Oaken's Law. When it is instead combined with lower inflation, we obtain the Phillips Curve. A graph can shed further light on the effects of labor demand shocks. A diagram of the labor market is depicted on the slide. Employment is on the horizontal axis, while wages appear on the vertical one. The total size of the labor force, E bar, appears as a vertical dashed line. This is the maximum amount of labor that can be employed. The intersection of the supply and demand curves determines the wage W and the employment rate E in equilibrium. Unemployment, which we call U, is also depicted. It is just the difference between the total size of the labor force, E bar, 
and employment E. Now suppose an increase in consumer demand makes it profitable for firms to raise output. This leads to a higher demand for labor. The labor demand curve shifts upward and to the right as depicted. As a result, the equilibrium wage rises from W to W prime and the unemployment rate falls from U to U prime. Thus, a positive demand shock leads to higher output, higher wage inflation, and lower unemployment. Since falling unemployment coincides with rising inflation, we obtain the Phillips curve. Since it also coincides with rising output, we obtain Okun's law. We next turn to algebraic statements of the Phillips curve and Okun's law. We first need to define a few concepts. The first is simple. Let Y denote actual output, real GDP in the economy. The second concept is a bit more complex. Let Y star denote what is called potential output. You should think of potential output as the amount the economy produces in normal times, when it is neither overheated nor in a recession. Next, let the output gap be the result of subtracting potential output from actual output and dividing the result by potential output. This is just the percentage by which actual output exceeds potential output. In a boom, the output gap is positive, while in a recession, it is negative. We are almost ready to state Okun's law. However, we need one more concept. It is the natural rate of unemployment, denoted U star. It can be interpreted as the average unemployment rate in a given economy over the business cycle. Like potential output, the natural rate of unemployment captures the level of unemployment in normal times, when the economy is neither in a boom nor in a slump. Finally, we define cyclical unemployment to be the difference between actual unemployment U and the natural rate of unemployment U star. Cyclical unemployment is that component of unemployment that fluctuates over the business cycle. Cyclical unemployment and the output gap have opposite signs. In a boom, the output gap is positive, but cyclical unemployment is negative since unemployment U lies below its average level of U star. In a slump, on the other hand, the output gap is negative, but cyclical unemployment is positive since unemployment U exceeds its average of U star. We can now give a precise statement of Okun's law. Let beta be a positive constant, usually estimated at about two. Okun's law states that the alpha gap equals minus beta times cyclical unemployment. In particular, the alpha gap is a decreasing function of cyclical unemployment. This equation reflects the empirical observation of Arthur Okun that unemployment tends to be high when output is low. But it's stronger than that because it states that when the alpha gap is zero, so is cyclical unemployment. We also have the tools we need to give an equation for the Phillips curve. Let gamma be a positive constant. The Phillips curve equation depicted here states that inflation pi equals a constant little a plus gamma times the output gap. Since gamma is positive, inflation tends to be higher in booms than in slumps. This captures Bill Phillips' observation that inflation is high when unemployment is low. The Phillips curve is depicted on the graph. Output appears on the horizontal axis while inflation appears on the vertical one. The vertical dashed line equals potential output Y star. The blue line is the Phillips curve. As you can see, the curve is upward sloping. This means that an increase in output is associated with higher inflation. Moreover, when output Y equals potential output Y star, the output gap is zero. So inflation pi equals the constant little a as shown. Thus, little a can be interpreted as the inflation rate in normal times, when the economy is neither overheated nor in a recession. 
This concludes the pre-lecture video on the Phillips curve and Oaken's law. Thank you for watching.